All right. Uh, I just pressure washed and cleaned this roof and already there's leaves and this little seed debris stuff. So I will need the, when I come back to do the field, you can see it blowing around uh, a blower to blow it off. There are storms out there and for the moment I am going to concentrate on cutting in the sides with the brush and I use this bar to open the can like so and here's this the fabric and shears a half inch drill to mix this that needs to be mixed I uh, I've done it by hand but then it takes a while and we'll use the fabric for places like this and this and any 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 suspected areas look at this this was closely power washed thoroughly and the fabric on this and this that's my plan is to cut around the edge with this four inch chip brush and when i was power washing i was noticing that the air could kind of blow up underneath this but now with the sun on it it i didn't think this water and ice was going to adhere to this uh torch down this has this see now that'll have to be taped but as as time goes on it it actually is sometimes well, when they, these roofs are newer there is a, a residue that comes out probably the plastic that's that is modified with the app plastic and not everything sticks to this um Roof cement does not stick to it. Vulcum does not stick to it. Silicone coating does stick. See, see how it's kind of like loose? You get your hands under it, but with some pressure. See, now it, it doesn't come up. So as I cut in, I will make sure that I'm pressing on it and then I will paint the the gecko roof up on to this so it becomes one with this water and ice membrane up to here I don't want to cut I don't want to seal this that would be a mistake you can see how there's not much pigment on the top and as we go you can see already how different it is wow look at this stir thing is bent now this is not the sanitized version that a company would put out this is real time, real world, on the job, old house with all the problems and imperfections of a human being, uh, especially who I don't, I've done tens of thousands of square feet of this, but not millions like some people have. Set this on the roof for the moment and then come back and use the brush to smooth it around. See, I'm using these gloves. Sooner or later, I won't be able to resist sticking my hand in it. These plastic buckets, this material will peel out of it after it sets. And we don't want bumps. This will leave bumps in the roof if you don't smooth it out. So we'll smooth it out. Let's start here. So any suspect seams like this 
need get the fabric where's the fabric where's the scissors oh and one of the most important things are some really good knee pads this keeps the suffering element down all right so let's do a little bit I'm making sure that this stuff is stuck where I put it while I'm cutting this in let's make sure this is pressed down everywhere so in the end the thickness of this roof needs to be 22 mils and there's a little gauge that uh, Geico makes available. Now this can be, have a bit of a learning curve and can be frustrating because it doesn't want to lay properly. So that's a good thing I'm using a short piece here. So I'll put it kind of up on that and drag it. Look at this being pretty well behaved. Drag it down right to right to that. I do not want to seal the shingles to this roof. I, I want any water to come out from under it if for some reason water gets under it and if you block it off and water gets under it for sure it'll be a leak so on the next coat you won't be able to see that this fabric is even there <clears throat> see I did I pressed this piece down this water and ice membrane and all I need to do is bring it out far enough to where and I get a, a roller that I don't get roller you know up onto the shingles now the factory has a certification program and we are certified see see that that's got to get the fabric the materials themselves are warranted for 50 years there's a material warranty of 50 years now all that means is if there's some kind of failure with the material they'll give you more material so with this warranty that you send in then they send something back that you can give to the customer fabric um, and this product was made by Geico Western I think was the name and it's now made by Firestone. If you, you expect to have any kind of warranty, you have to follow the instructions. You have to put it on 22 mils thick. And yeah, here it is, Firestone Building Products. And they even have a helpline. But I, I don't know what being a certified installer of this product is. But now they also have a lot of other, other commercial products where there's an epoxy um, version, there's a 100% solids version, there's a special primer, there's ways to put this on so you're only on the roof once. And uh, this, doing this product, I mean it's 50 years, is, and I'm sure that this is going to last 50 years, and that, that's kind of good enough for my purposes, and I especially like that 
this has a petroleum distillate in it in other words it's like got paint thinner or mineral spirits in it and what that does is it actually eats if you ever coat this on uh, a piece of 30 pound felt you can see that it dissolves into anything that petroleum distillate you know like paint thinner uh, will dissolve into so it in a sense it becomes one with the roof because the uh, the solvent in this actually dissolves into it now the the version that they have that has a a, a primer or an epoxy primer um, epoxy is I think a big commercial uh, kind of product where they have these sprayers that cost ten thousand dollars they get on a roof and do it all at once and this primer you know is quite the thing and so, since it's a hundred percent solids there uh, this primer that I'm talking about there is no um, there's no solvents in it it's all uh, one chemical that will uh, when when it reacts with itself and of course it's very sticky very adhesive it bonds to the uh, the substance that you're putting it on but this has a little different method in that it's actually dissolving into these asphalt type roofs now you can put this on an EPDM roof and it's not going to dissolve into an EPDM roof but any of these asphalt based product roofs it will dissolve into now I use this fabric that is made by them I them Geico or Firestone that's made for this application and I I could there are others and the warranty I would imagine would have something to say if you use somebody else's fabric so this fabric has holes in it it I don't know it's not all that much more than anything else and and it's designed and researched to work with this system and so I, I use it now see you can even I've done this before you can go over holes and bubbles I'm gonna have to figure out how to get up under this you don't want to go over the top of this sort of stuff actually this is how to do it and just lift it up and shove this up under here you never want to seal off the bottom now I can put this on layer after layer after layer but we don't want to seal the bottom of this little area I better leave it alone because I might want to get back up underneath there with some felt or something um, see how there's all this kind of dirt particles gets into it but you would be surprised when it's done that it just you would think it would look a mess but it somehow seems to not be so bad and and how I know that is because sometimes you just don't have a choice to do certain things and and then you think oh that's never gonna work and it actually does see now look there's the, actually a little dust in there yuck I'm gonna Now I'm not sure what I'll do with the counter flashing here. I have a proposal to the customer to tuck point the back of this thing. Um, 
otherwise I'm gonna have to figure out something about the counter flashing and it's probably gonna generate a lot of dirt that's gonna come down just like that and get in there so uh, if it's dry though it won't be too much of a problem there is a big wasp nest up under here shot a bunch of foam in there and it looks like it could use some more I'll come back and deal with that but watch this corner I keep an eye on this corner and when we get done you'll see what I mean about how it just sort of all manages to work itself out now see yeah I need a little piece here now where they've run this if they've run this roof up here and then this comes down there's a huge overlap I don't worry too much about about this because it's going to be it's going to be waterproof so I think I'll need to put fabric there because it's just not going to look right if that's flappy I come up here and see that you know there's like a shadow line you want it to be monolithic so we'll we'll fabric that like this I have the tape on here bedded in in a coating and can you imagine doing this in the fall with all of a sudden a wind blew a whole bunch of leaves onto the roof and this is one of the more time consuming parts is cutting this in and I want to bring your attention to see how this is globbed up with a bunch of roof cement well keep an eye on what that's going to look like this is also the same over here now I came to this part right and we're going to see how globbed up that is and what that's going to look like at the end I noticed to see how flexible that is this is SBS modified and I actually think this this piece is here too uh, and this is TPP this is torch down TPP modified and look there's an a negative seam the seam should be like this now this is torched down when it flows out like that and it should flow out like five-eighths of an inch or so um, this didn't get good flow out and so it's that seems failing but this is a negative seam so the seam is put over this so when it fails water water goes in it's considered to be a no-no in roofing but with this roof it's not going to matter it's going to make it uh, irrelevant but see how this this sandy kind of stuff here and how at least this one piece how really flexible it is app modified isn't this flexible uh, but it's not going to matter for our purposes now there is a line of storms out here headed this way and uh, I wanted to get as much of this cutting in as I can This black gunk is now going to be buried for 50 years when I wipe when I wipe this on when I paint this on um, now this is this is just the first of two coats uh, when I paint this on I like to go back because there will be places where it, it that's not too bad where it likes to droop and run down 
and I just think that looks unprofessional to have the, your roof running down the wall. Whoops. See, I use these gloves because sooner or later I can't resist sticking my hands in it. And I, uh, where there is this big gap underneath here, I put the fabric, the tape. Well, actually, it's kind of confusing. This is Geico fabric. There is a product that's in a, I don't know, couple gallon or one gallon bucket called Geico fabric, but it's not a fabric at all. It has, um, it has fabric in it, like, you know, pieces of fibers. And so when you put it down, it, it, it acts like, um, like a fabric, but it is a liquid that comes in a bucket. It's called Geico, Geico tape. And this is Geico fabric. Anyway, it's confusing. So make sure if you use this stuff, you're familiar with the terminology or you're going to be, uh, you're going to order this and end up with some one gallon buckets of Geico what is there's also a Geico flex so there's Geico fabric Geico tape Geico tape is in the one gallon container that's Geico fabric so um, make sure you're clear when you order it if you do um, about how that about what you're wanting and uh, the Geico tape that's in the one gallon bucket is pretty expensive way to uh, to do some of this stuff when this I don't know 250 500 foot roll of uh, fabric and this uh, comparatively inexpensive liquid uh, can bridge quite nicely over things so you just have to consider you know what you're what you're doing there's the storm out there there's where the storm is not and the drill is in the bag the lid is attached 